A few weeks ago I received this new laser engraver. This is the Laser Packer 2. The creators had a very successful Kickstarter campaign last year, with the Laser Packer 1. And now they released a new and improved version. The design is compact. We have galvanic actuators with a lot of speed, easy and intelligent control from any smartphone, real-time preview of the design, a 5W laser and a portable handheld shape. But what it could do? In this video I will show you what you receive with the kit and test it over a few materials and give you an overall opinion. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. I received the package and inside we have the engraver module, which by the way is very compact. Then we have the metal stand. We have the power supply and some cables. We have also some USB Type-C cables. The protection glasses and the protection plastic cone for printing without the stand. I've also received an envelope with all sorts of materials to test the engraver. We have a wood block some plywood, we have cork, some fabric, leather, cardboard and some painted aluminum. I will also use some materials of mine such as plastic and some 5mm thick plywood and we will see the results later. Now this is the main unit. Different from a CNC machine where the laser is moving with the axis, in this case the laser is fixed in place. Then we have some mirrors and some galvanic actuators inside that will move the point of the laser in the X and Y direction. This process is way faster than a CNC machine. The preview speed is 3750 mm per second and the maximum engraving speed is 600 mm per second, which as they claim could be 10 times faster than a standard CNC machine. But of course, with this solution we are limited in printing area. CNC machines could be as big as you want, but in this case the maximum printing area of the laser packer is 100 by 100 mm, which is not that big. But if you use some accessories, you could increase that area way more, just by sliding the engraver or use the rotative tool for engraving cylinders. Ok, the stand is also made out of metal and a little bit heavy, which is good. On the side we have some buttons for adjusting the height. This process is made with a step motor inside, and to power this stand we need the USB connector from the laser unit. The entire support could tilt just by unscrewing this knob here. Ok, so on the back of this main unit, we have the main power input and 3 USB connectors. We can use two of these to power the stand motor and the other one to power the fan for the protective cone. The laser unit also has a cooling fan here, so this will keep the laser cool. On the top part we have some buttons for control, so we could activate the preview or start and pause the print. Ok, so let's assemble it. Using just one screw I place the main unit over the stand. Then I connect the USB cable from the unit to the stand so we could now use the push buttons to adjust the height and focus the laser beam. I connect power to the input and that's it. The machine is ready. At this point make sure that you are very careful, that you wear the protection glasses and that you never place your hand or your face in front of the laser. To control this we can use a USB connection to a PC, by using the given cable connected here on the back. But a better and faster solution is to use a smartphone. So for that you have to scan the QR code and install the laser packer app. Ok, so now I have the app, so now let's open the Bluetooth menu. I search for the laser engraver and pair to it. Now I open the laser packer app. Here you can print from some examples they give you, you can import your own design from the gallery, make a photo or create your own design right now with text and drawings features. So let's make a quick test. From the example gallery I select the laser packer logo. First the app will ask you to insert the drawing size that you want to print. For example, I set it to 20x20 20 20 and press preview. The graphics are sent to the machine via Bluetooth and now we can see the preview square. Don't worry, this is very low power for now, 
so it won't engrave yet. We can use this in order to center our print on the material that we want to engrave. For example, I place a small plywood. I don't like the size so I go back in the menu and set it to 40 by 40 mm and click preview once again. Now it's ok, so we can go in the next menu. Here you can select the material type, the laser power from 0 to 100%, the depth and also the amount of loops that you want the laser to make. For this simple test I select the wood material and the power of only 40% and I press start. The engraver starts working and it's very fast. In just a few seconds I have the logo printed on the wood. You can also go in the editor and just draw a design. And if you like it, just press start and it will be engraved on the material. But what materials are supported? Well, now that we know how to use it, let's make a few tests on different materials. Let's start with this fabric. I think this should be interesting. This looks like some sort of silk. I start at low power, so it won't go through. Using custom settings, I was able to get these results. I think it was engraved quite well. And the same goes for the grey fabric. Ok, so next I've tested it on some red leather. I've engraved this panda logo and this time with a little bit more depth. Setting the depth to a higher value will make the process slower because the laser will travel slower as well, in order to achieve bigger depth. Once again I think I got good results on the ladder and maybe I've set the depth a little bit too high. You have to play with the settings till you get the best result. Next I wanted to engrave my plastic glasses case. Luckily this is black, so the light is better absorbed. In this case I've used the type tool from the laser packer app. I've printed this in negative mode, meaning that we engrave the rest but not the text. I think this also turned out quite good, maybe once again the power was a little bit too much. Ok, the next test was made on these aluminum sheets, that are covered with a small paint cover. So actually we are engraving this thin layer of plastic film on top and not the metal. I've tested this on the blue film first. And the logo turned out great. I've also tested this on the black and the red colors. On the black one I've engraved the spider and on the red one my own logo. To print my logo I've just opened the picture from my phone gallery and selected the size and the power settings and then press start. Next test was on this wood block. We don't need too much power for this, so the engrave process was faster this time. I can say that the final result looks great. But what other kind of wood we can engrave? Next I've tested it on quark. The first test was kind of a fail, because quark burns very easy, so the power was too high. I've made this paw logo and it was very deep and dark. So I've made the next engrave with the power at only 20%, so this time the engrave was too low. So finally, with full power but only 5% of depth, I was able to engrave on cork, and I've made this open hardware logo. So the idea is to burn it at full power, but for a very brief moment. Ok, so at this point I said, let's try to cut wood. If you can cut the wood, for sure you could engrave it, just by lowering the power. So I've took a 5mm thick plywood. This should be a good candidate for wood cutting. For this test I've placed 100% power, 100% depth and 3 loops and then I press start. We can see that only at first loop the light is already passing sometimes to the other side. So of course with 2 loops it was more than enough to cut the wood. I'm actually amazed that it was able to cut it. As you can see I can now easily remove the part. I've also made some tests with more shapes and power levels. Below 80% depth we need more loops, 
so with that the wood around will get more burn. So it's better to place everything at 100%. So the power is enough to cut 5mm thick plywood, but the size is too small for some sort of projects where you would need bigger plywood parts. So that's why I think this machine is not meant to be used for wood cutting and is more for engraving logos and so on. Anyway, after this I've made a few more tests. One was on this metal pet necklace, which is the same as the previous aluminum sheets with paint cover. I've also tested engraving a silicone smartphone case. And first the power was way too high and melted the case. So I recommend you to go from low power to high power and not backwards as I did. Anyway, finally with lower power I was able to just engrave a little bit the silicone case. This result is not the best, but maybe with more attempts we could get better. I've also tested the engraver on white acrylic. Now because this is white, the light won't get absorbed too much, but I was able to engrave a little bit into the plastic. And then I've even tried with transparent. Without anything dark, the light goes right through it. If you want to engrave on transparent, you have to first paint it black as I did here. And then at low power, you could engrave a thin layer of the transparent acrylic. The results turn out quite ok, but as you can see, the paint texture affects the engraving process, so try to paint the plastic black as smooth as possible. If you want, you can remove the unit from the stand and engrave directly with the protection cone. Like this is very easy to engrave on surfaces. Just place the engraver over and press start. Like this I was able to engrave my wood background frame and one of my wood furniture very fast. So guys, that's what I have for today with this 5W handheld laser engraver. I think the design is nice, the power is enough for a big variety of materials, even cutting wood, the app control is also nice, but the size is very small. Only using the accessories you would be able to engrave bigger parts or round objects. But for engraving your logos very fast and in a repetitive way, this is one of the best solutions, because it's very comfortable doesn't occupy too much space and is easy to use. I hope that my video will give you a general idea about this product, in case that you consider buying it, so you can check more details on their Kickstarter page. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, Electroloops here, thank you for watching this episode on my channel and uh, your support is great for me, but if you want to beat this YouTube algorithm because as you know teaching and uh, learning videos are not very popular, you can make a stupid or maybe a funny video and it will get viral in a moment. But for us, for teaching videos and stuff like that, it won't be very easy to get over this YouTube algorithm. So please, maybe you will leave a comment below, maybe you will give a like and subscribe and also activate the notification bell and like that we will win this uh, YouTube algorithm. And by the way, if you want to also support my projects, your comments and your likes are very well welcomed. But I'm also on Patreon, so you just click the link below for patreon.com slash electronoobs and maybe you can select one of the tires. And in by that you will be able to see my videos before the YouTube release. You can comment, you can get the files for my project and depending on the tire, maybe even receive a, a t-shirt like this one. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for your support and 